Alrighty then, it's now night time, as you can probably tell. I've got the light on the camera on here. Um, yeah, anyway, you know, there's a trend that I'm noticing, and it's been an ongoing thing for a while, but it seems to be picking up steam. And I'm noticing it in my country here of Canada, and I'm sure that it's happening in other places too. Uh, we have more and more authority figures, government officials, police officers, uh, the courts. More and more we have people, we have authority basically encouraging hooliganism, encouraging thugs, reprobates, um insane people, um, encouraging all that, pushing mental illness, pushing every kind of crime you can think of, and, and you know, really encouraging all that stuff, and um, punishing uh, the, the good people, punishing the decent people, the people who work, the people, you know, see, here, here's the thing. What's happening is those who tear down are being encouraged. Those who tear down the country in various ways, they're being encouraged. Those who make you feel unsafe to go out onto the street. Those who are destroying our heritage and our, our, um, our history, our monuments and so on. You know, those who are doing that. Those who are um, trying to bring social disorder those who are trying to convince the kids that, you know, they can be any one of 658 different genders and all that. Those who are trying to tear apart the nuclear family. Those who are um, just basically bringing chaos with them. Those people are encouraged. Right now in Montreal, there's encampments all over the place of protesters that are doing vandalism, they're assaulting people and everything else. Um, they've been there now for weeks and weeks. There's a huge encampment at McGill University that's been there for eight weeks. Um, you know, the trucker convoy in Ottawa, which was made up of good, decent, hardworking and productive people, people who build, not people who tear down, that trucker convoy, um, they didn't tolerate it for very long, I'll tell you, before they sent in a bunch of goons from parts unknown, a bunch of United Nations goons, to bust their heads and take them to jail and smash their trucks and impound them and all the rest of it. You know, this is what happened. But yet, uh, all this other stuff, all these... These, these um, anarchists are being allowed to do as they please. Um, you know, homeless camps, or we got a system that has created homelessness en masse. It's no longer just people who made bad choices who end up homeless. It could happen to anyone, pretty much. And um, those encampments where homeless people are getting torn apart and torn down all the time, yet an encampment of anarchists, of violent anarchists, who are doing um, graffiti, who will physically beat you. If you go in there and you're not one of them, they will physically beat you. Um, you know, these are people who aren't looking for constructive debate and, 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 and discussion. These are people who will tell you what you are going to think, and if you disagree with them, God help you. You know, that, that's what we're dealing with, with these people. And the police are encouraging them. And the police are taking their orders from somebody, you know. So, I mean, who, who, who's telling the police that this is what they should be doing? Who's doing that? It'll be somebody above the police, because the police don't take orders from those who are beneath them. So, it'll, who's telling them to do this? <coughs> You know, it's coming from on high. Um, and see, here, here's the thing, though. This is all, what's happening is the people who tear down, the people who destroy, the people who loot and burn and kill and, 
and you know the people who want to burn all the books and destroy all the monuments and they want to ban the bible because they say it's hate literature and they want to get your kids all confused about what they are you know hey maybe you're a fucking cat who knows you know what I mean? <laughs> maybe you're a fish maybe you're a mouse maybe you're a mouse and a cat imagine the inner conflict that would cause <laughs> this is what they do and it's like look um no you're a young woman or, or you're a young man. That's what you are. And if you want to know which of the two you are, just, you know, pull down your pants and have a look between your legs and you'll know. You know? I mean, it's as simple as that. If you have any confusion about it, just take a look down there and you'll know what you are. Um, now, you may not identify with that entirely. Some people don't, but it is what it is. You know, and I mean, you know, some women are, 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 are more masculine than, than a lot of men. And some men are more feminine than a lot of women. But the bottom line is, you still are technically what you are. Whatever you were born as. Uh, so whether you're a woman that wants to wear coveralls and work boots and go to work on heavy machinery every day, or whether you're a woman who wants to be a housewife and a mother, or you want to work in a flower shop, or you want to work in a dress shop, or whatever, you know, and you like to wear pretty little pretty little things, uh, you know, and, and all that, and, and to be pretty and do your makeup and your hair and your nails and stuff. Um, whatever it is, whether you're a woman who likes to wear work boots, or you like to wear high-heeled, open-toed shoes, you're a woman. And the same is true for men. There are men who are kind of effeminate going or whatever, and there's other men who are masculine going. Most of us, you know, lean more towards the masculine. But, you know, there are some men that are super masculine. <laughs> and there's, that, that's not me. I'm not super masculine, but I lean more toward the masculine. Um, uh, but, yeah, there are men who are who are kind of effeminate by nature, but they're still men. They're still, you know, XY chromosome. Um, they still have a penis. They're still men, you know. Anyway, the bottom line is, though, the people who want to do all that, to tear down the nuclear family, to tear down everything, to destroy history and, and rewrite it, to destroy, the, you know, to do away with the Bible, to say it's hate literature, um... And, and so on, and just to tear everything down, to loot and burn and steal and rob and kill and beat and destroy, those people are being encouraged for a reason. And the reason they're being encouraged is because we have a globalist government. And, you know, people who build things up, productive people who build things up, are counterintuitive to globalism. Because the thing is, if your country's doing really well, why would you want it to be amalgamated into a one-world system so that it now can be brought down by all the bullshit from the places that aren't doing so well? Why would you want that? You wouldn't, you know. But if your country's a shithole, what difference does it make if it joins up with a bunch of other shitholes? And that's what they're doing. They're turning the whole world into a shithole. And then it doesn't matter. So what? If Canada's a shithole and the United States is a shithole and England's a shithole and France is a shithole and Italy's a shithole and so on, what difference does it make if they all amalgamate? You see? Whereas if one country's doing really well, if the United States is doing really well and France isn't, just as an example, not to pick on France or anything, but I got to got to choose some country, so I'll just say France for that reason. Um, if the United States is doing really well and France isn't, why would the United States want to hitch its star to France? Well, it wouldn't. The same would be true the opposite way. If the United States is a shithole and France is doing well, why would France want to hitch its star to the United States? Again, it wouldn't. See. So this is the reason for all the tearing down. This is the reason society is the way it is at the present time. 
This is why we're dealing with all the crap that we're dealing with, all the confusion, all the gender crap, and all the, you know, let, let's call the Bible hate literature. Let's call all the people who built the country up hate mongers, and we'll tear their statues down, and we'll rewrite the history books and all the rest of it. I mean, look, with that, too, you got to be aware of history to understand these people. These people, though, that, yeah, a lot of them were, a lot of them did have what we would consider racist viewpoints. A lot of them did back then. Uh, but you got to understand how society was at that time. And if you can understand that, you can understand them, and you can say, okay, we changed, we're not like that anymore, and that's a good thing. But still, those people did build the country. You know, maybe we disagree with them on certain things, but we can understand why they were the way they were, and they did build the country. So we give them credit for that. It doesn't mean we agree with them on everything, but we give, give them credit for that, and we understand the atmosphere in which they were operating when they did the things they did, and when they made the, you know, when, when they made the, whatever laws that they made that weren't good, and so on. But, um, you know, what's happening right now is there's no understanding. It's just, nope, nope, I'm going to put the blinders on and I'm only going to see what I want to see. And I'm going to target anything that I disagree with. If I disagree with you, you're going to be my target. You're my enemy now, and I'm going to get you. That's the mentality. And there's no trying to understand the other guy. There's no trying to... to, to to have constructive conversations, to have constructive debate. There's nothing. There's just personal attacks. It's, well, you, you, you're a hate monger. Oh, you believe in God? So, so you, you must be a hate monger then. Only hate mongers believe in God. You, you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Well, you're a hate monger. You believe the Bible? Hate monger. Um, you protested against mandates? Grandma killer. You want to kill all the old people with COVID. That's what you want to do. You're a grandma killer. You um, don't buy into all a lot of the different things that are being pushed with, you know, with Weber-type related stuff. If I say what it is, they're going to tag this video, but you know what I mean. We're all doomed because we're going to boil to death or whatever, you know. Um, if you don't buy into that, well, then you are a selfish prick. And you just want to keep driving your old car and polluting the air and having heat in your house in the wintertime. And you don't care that, you know, you don't care that my grandchildren are going to probably die because of your selfishness or whatever. That's, you know, <laughs> this is what we're up against, this mentality. All these really frightened people who have a hive mentality and are, un are seem to be incapable of thinking for themselves. Seem that they, they definitely have a defective bullshit meter because, um, you know, no matter how ludicrous a thing is, they just like you, you take electric cars as an example. The power grid can't handle them. They don't have the capacity at this point. To really be of any use other than just as a grocery getter you know um they're super expensive when they come to the end of their life which happens relatively quickly with those things um we don't know how to recycle them we have no idea and so we got that to deal with um None of that is good for the environment. You know, the, these vehicles, they're being charged for the most part off of coal-fired generating stations. You know, so again, and even with that, you know, people think the coal is terrible. And some of it is. It depends. There's dirty coal and there's clean coal. Like there is coal that actually burns almost entirely. It, it burns really clean. And that coal is worth considerably more money than the dirty coal. Like the coal mines of West Virginia, 
uh, there were coal mines in West Virginia that had the dirty coal, and there were coal mines that had the clean coal. If you had the clean coal, you had it made. If you owned, owned the mine like that, you could pretty much print money because um, it was sought after. And a lot of people aren't aware of that, but there is actually a type of coal, and it, it's common in places like West Virginia, where the coal mines were, where, where coal mining was a major part of the economy for, for, for a long time. And that stuff burns really clean. But see, we're not allowed to know that. You know? That that's lost information now. We're not supposed to know that. We can't talk about that because that's subversive. You know, that's dangerous talk. You know, this this is what we're dealing with. I mean, it's time to inject a little common sense into things. Uh, anyway, the bottom line is the reason that all the destructive things, all the things that are destructive to society and to the family and to, you know having some grounding and some, um, you know, having some roots even. The idea now that we got a transient population running around just following the work. And that chances are when, you, when your kids grow up, they're not going to live in the same town as you. They're going to have to move away to get work and stuff. I see all of that. And then they'll have kids and you'll see your grandchildren maybe twice a year grandchildren won't really know you you'll be a voice on the end of the phone sometimes you'll be a card at christmas and on their birthday maybe you'll see them at christmas time but otherwise they're not really going to know you when i was growing up uh, my dad's parents lived in the in, in the same town they lived down the street from my school i saw them all the time and that was my refuge their house was my safe space their house was the place where I could be a child, you know, and um, I was loved unconditionally. And I'm so happy that I had that, you know, because so many don't. Even back then, so many didn't. I was really privileged to have had that. And I miss my grandparents terribly, you know. But the bottom line is, I miss them as badly as I do because they were such a big part of my upbringing. And I was so lucky to have them, you know, and to have access to them. To literally be able to walk out of my school, to walk like five blocks, and I could walk into my grandparents' house. I could just open the door and walk into my grandparents' house. And I was always welcomed, and I was always accepted, and I was always loved. And that meant a great deal to me. And it still does, the fact that I had that. I was very fortunate. Um, children now, like I say, families are scattered all over the place. Children now don't have that for the most part. And that is sad. And, you know, all this stuff that's being changed and that, that's happening, it's all designed tear everything down. You know, the globalists say build back better. Well, tell me this. If you buy a, a, a lot and you want to build a house on it, but there's already a building on the lot where you want to put your house, you can't put your house on top of another building. you got to tear what's there down before you can build something else. That's what's going on. It's being torn down. That That's the reason that those who tear down are being encouraged and those who build are being discouraged. That's the reason that the worker is punished and the lazy man is rewarded. That's the reason that the thief and the con artist and the vandal are treated so well. And, you know, the honest, hard-working man is treated like a criminal. That's the reason. That's the reason that, uh, you know, getting married and having children and everything, you know, that's discouraged now. Oh, no, you, you shouldn't do that. You know, <laughs> I mean, and they're making it now that you can't afford to do it because you just can't earn enough money to do it. You know, and um, 
having getting married and having children is becoming a luxury. Owning a home is becoming a luxury. Even owning a car is becoming a luxury. Um, for the most part, it already has become a luxury. And that's, all again, all part of the Build Back Better program of these globalists. It's not better for you and I. It's better for them. They want to bring back feudalism. They want to bring back a system where you own nothing, as they have said. Well, if you don't own it, who's going to own it? Somebody's going to own it. I'll tell you that right now. It's still going to exist and somebody's going to own it. That parcel of land that they're telling you you can't own? Who's going to own that? It's not going to be you if they get their way. Somebody's going to own it. You know who's going to own it? They're going to own it. See, it's better for them. It's not better for you. In feudal times, a serf, which was a peasant worked himself into an early grave um, to enrich his master, to enrich the lord of the manor. And by law, the only thing that serf owned in this world was his stomach. And the reason for that is this, your stomach's a liability because it has to be fed. You know? It'd be like you don't own your car. You're not allowed to use your car. You don't own it. Somebody else is going to have the use of it. But you still own the gas tank. And you're still responsible to keep the gas tank filled. That's basically what it was. You own your stomach, otherwise you own nothing. The Lord of the manor could come and he could take anything from you. The Lord of the manor could kill you. And it wouldn't be murder because you were his property. As long as he didn't harm your stomach while he was killing you, he couldn't stab you in the gut and, and hurt your stomach, because then he would be in trouble. But as long as he cut your throat, though, that was perfectly fine, because that was his throat he'd be cutting then, not yours, because you don't own that. That that Your throat belongs to the master. It belongs to the lord of the manor. He could come, he could have sex with your wife or your daughter. You had no say. They were his property. He could do what he wanted with them. Um, you know, like th that's how it was. You You worked like a dog producing on a farm that wasn't your farm and you never owned anything and um, you had to give most of what you produced to the lord of the manor. He allowed you to keep just enough back so you didn't starve to death because if, if you starved to death you'd be no more good to work. So he had to allow you just enough food to feed your stomach so you didn't starve to death. Anyway, that's what they want for us basically. And that's the reason that they're disrupting things like they are. That's the reason they're encouraging the disruption that they're encouraging. That's the reason that you, you lose your home and you end up living in a tent in the woods or in a park. The cops will come back there and beat your head in and, and cut your tent up and throw everything you own away. You know? But if you're one of these anarchists, you can set up camp in the park and you can do all kinds of vandalism and you can physically attack people and and the cops will bring you donuts. And they've literally done that. In Toronto, they've done that. They brought those people donuts. They actually bring them snacks. You know, Toronto police have done that. <coughs> and like I say, they're taking their orders from higher up. So, you know, it isn't just them. We can blame them, yeah, but it isn't just them. They're taking their orders from somebody. And so, that's the bottom line anyway. This is all part of that agenda. And so, you know, we need to resist all of this stuff. We need to be vocal against it. We need to not be a part of it. We need to understand what it is. And, you know, the fact that you disagree with what's happening does not make you a hateful bigot. You'll be accused of it, and I know a lot of people are very sensitive about that. They don't want to be accused of such a thing. But you got to consider the source of the accusation. I've been accused of all kinds of evil by these people. I've been threatened. I've, I had a guy from California one time on Facebook read a comment I made about the current state of affairs in this world. And he told me, he said, I'm going to get on an airplane and I'm going to fly up to Canada, I'm going to fly to Ontario, and I'm going to, I'm going to find out where you are. 
I'm going to hunt you down, and I'm going to I'm going to kill you. I'm going to find you, and I'm going to kill you. That's what the guy told me. You know, now I didn't take him too seriously, but I guess theoretically it could happen. But anyway, that was three years ago, and I still haven't I still haven't been killed, so I guess I'm okay. But the bottom line is, I had that happen. I had a nurse in Bellevue, Washington, tell me that uh, that if me or anybody like me ends up in the hospital where she works, her and her colleagues make sure that, that people like me don't leave alive. That they literally will kill people like me in the hospital to make sure we die in there. Because they hate us that much. Um... You know, this woman had a picture of Dr. Fauci as her profile picture with a halo. And it said, St. Fauci, <laughs> you know, and stuff. So, I mean, this is these are the people that we, we have to deal with. These are the people we have to contend with. And they have the full support of the infrastructure. They have the full support of the government and, and all that that entails. We, on the other hand, don't have that. You know, we have the the the, re, the recriminations. We have the the um we have the police and all other government authority against us. But we are on the right side of history. I can sit here now in my bed in this camper, and I can confidently tell you that I know I'm on the right side of history. I don't believe I'll live to be vindicated. <laughs> 